The United States refuting one by one China's arguments for its expansive claims in the South China Sea, including parts of the West Philippine Sea and the country's exclusive economic zone. Today's report is going to be all about what is happening with China in the South China Sea. I personally monitor this activity closely and feel it is relevant to all of us who have interest in the Philippines, Southeast Asia, as well as the rest of the world. Hello and welcome to today's Daily Philippines News Report. And if you are subscribed to this channel, then welcome back. But if not, please consider subscribing right now to stay up to date on interesting news that we follow here in the Philippines. And if you do find these reports informative, please click the like button. And back to our news. In a detailed study released by the Bureau of Oceans and International Environmental and Scientific Affairs of the U.S. Department of State, whew, representing the views of the United States government, described China's claims as inconsistent with international law, particularly the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, and branded China's claims of sovereignty or exclusive jurisdiction over most of the South China Sea as unlawful. The United States rejected China's claim to sovereignty over more than 100 features in the South China Sea that are submerged below the sea surface at high tide and low tide elevations such as Mischief Reef and Second Thomas or Union Shoal, arguing that it falls beyond the lawful territorial sea entitlement and contrary to international law, the U.S. adds there is no basis for China to use straight baselines to create island groups. Dongsha, which is contested by Taiwan, Shisha, made up of the Paracel Islands claimed by Vietnam, Zhangsha, that includes Scarborough Shoal, and Nansha, or the Spratleys, which include Mischief Reef, Union Shoal, and with this, the U.S. adds China has no right to require warships as exercising innocent passage to ask permission from China and prevent and punish so-called violations of its security laws. The U.S. points out China's claims anchored on supposed historic rights has no basis, as ruled in the 2016 Arbitral Award. The U.S. asserts the Arbitral Award, long rejected by Beijing, is final and binding on China and the Philippines. For maritime law expert Jay Batangbakal, this study complements the Arbitral Award by addressing and debunking China's attempts to suddenly revise or re restate its claim after the ruling, and to exploit possible loopholes. But the study has clarified the implications of China's restatement of its claim and shows that it remains contrary as it deals with China's excessive claims and what they called the imaginary and fabricated Changsha Island Group. The Chinese embassy has yet to issue a statement on the matter. Now, as an update, the United States laid out its most detailed case yet against Beijing's unlawful claims in the South China Sea, rejecting both the geographic and historical basis for its vast, divisive map. In a 47-page research paper, the State Department's Bureau of Oceans and International Environmental and Scientific Affairs said China had no basis under international law for claims that have put Beijing on a collision course with the Philippines, Vietnam, and other Southeast Asian nations. The overall effect of these maritime claims is that the PRC, the People's Republic of China, unlawfully claims sovereignty or some form of exclusive jurisdiction over most of the South China Sea. These claims gravely undermine the rule of the law in the oceans and numerous universally recognized provisions of international law reflected in the convention, referring to a 1982 UN treaty on the law of the sea ratified by China, but not the United States. Releasing the study, a State Department statement called again on Beijing to cease its unlawful and coercive activities in the South China Sea. The paper is an update of a 2014 study that similarly disputed the so-called Nine Dash Line that forms the basis for much of Beijing's stance. In 2016, an international court sided with the Philippines in its complaints over China's claims. Beijing replied by offering new justifications including saying that China had historical rights over the area. The State Department papers said that such historical-based claims had no legal basis and that China had not offered specifics. It also took issue with geographic justifications for China's claims, saying that 
more than 100 features Beijing highlights in the South China Sea are submerged by water during high tide and therefore are beyond the lawful limits of any state's territorial sea. Beijing cites such geographical features to claim four island groups, which the State Department study said did not meet criteria for baselines under the UN Convention. In response by the Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson, China disputes the Americans' report, calling it a misrepresentation of international law designed to confuse and upset the regional situation, and continued that the media note and study of the U.S. side misrepresents international law to mislead the public, confuse right with wrong, and upset the regional situation. Also claiming that China, as a signatory, earnestly observes the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, UNCLOS, in a rigid and responsible manner, and claimed that the United States has refused to join the convention. It wantonly misrepresents the convention and adopts double standards out of selfish gains. Such political manipulation is irresponsible and undermines international rule of law. Just to mention, these are not my statements, and I am quoting the Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson. China enjoys historic rights in the South China Sea, and claim their sovereignty and relevant rights and interests in the South China Sea are established in the long course of history and are in line with the UN Charter, the UNCLOS, and other international law. It should also be noted that China maintains its position rejecting the 2016 Arbitral Award to the Philippines, saying that it is illegal, null, and void. China does not recognize or accept it. The report was issued as the United States increasingly challenges China on the global stage, identifying the rising communist power as its chief long-term threat. In 2020, then-Secretary of State Mike Pompeo explicitly backed claims of Southeast Asian nations in the South China Sea, going beyond the past U.S. stance of challenging China without taking an issue on which countries were right. The South China Sea is home to valuable oil and gas deposits and shipping lanes and Beijing's neighbors have frequently voiced concern that their giant neighbor was seeking to expand its reach. Military leadership crisis. When when President Xi of China looks and sees what happened in Afghanistan, they don't have fear of us anymore. They don't have respect for us anymore. And you know what? All right, on that note, that is my news update for today. Be sure to click the notification bell for my next Philippines news update to keep up with what's happening in the Philippines. Be sure to also check the description below where I list links to my various resources. And while you're at it, please click that like button. It really helps. As always, thank you for watching. Feel free to drop a line in the comments with questions or topic suggestions. God bless us all. Stay tuned. We'll see you in the next video.